what I heard uh, Jay Powell talk about inflation uh, yesterday, it, it, it I hearken back to what he he said. Uh, two meetings ago. It's transitory. It's transitory yeah. inflation. But the first indicator that it may not be transitory is that it was left out of last week's statement. And now actually Powell is acknowledging that it may not be transitory. You know, and it's these supply chain hiccups that um, have been really hard to grapple with, and they just continue. I mean, you have international uh, shipping workers groups talking about how you've got to get vaccines available to to workers all over the world who are driving trucks and, and unloading ships, and you've got to, uh, you know, allow the freedom of movement of some of these workers, and, and just the, the virus has just really uh, wreaked havoc on, on the global system, and that's one of the reasons why you've seen so much of this inflation problem persist. And the, and the Fed chief acknowledging that it's, it's stayed higher longer than they had originally thought. And he talked about the two real frustrating things for him uh, right now in terms of the economic outlook. Listen. It is frustrating to acknowledge that that, that uh, getting people vaccinated and getting Delta under control 18 months later still remains the most important economic policy that we have. Um, and it's also frustrating to see the, uh, you know, the bottlenecks and supply chain uh, problems not getting better at so a lot of experts, a big front page uh, Wall Street Journal story today, even talking about the Delta variant and these bottlenecks right now aside, on the other side of COVID, a lot of people are expecting a real economic rebound and these things to work out. It's just the right now that has been so frustrating to try to um, forecast. Everyone from Sherman, Sherwin Williams, the paint maker, higher raw material prices means they're raising their paint prices. Uh, the Dollar Tree stores, you know, uh, the known for dollar products having to raise the cost of some products because they can't be made and sold for a dollar uh, anymore because of the higher input cost, costs, uh, bacon, energy. You just go down the line and I, I just can't find a corner of the economy that hasn't been affected by um, by the increased demand and the supply, uh, the supply snafus, frankly, that have uh, caused prices to go high. Ladies and gentlemen, inflation will remain high through 2022. Now, they're already saying the shortages and supply chain shortages will are really indefinite. There's no end in sight. So if there's no end in sight, then there couldn't possibly be an end in sight with the inflation as well. So uh, the number one thing that I saw today that's hitting the market are other products like McCormick. You're going to start seeing less and less McCormick spices on the shelves of your supermarkets and your dollar stores. And many of the big food makers are telling grocers already that there will be limited quantity of number of products, including items like Rice Krispie Treats, Sour Patch Kids, Ben and Jerry Ice Cream, McCormick, Gourmet spices, Marie Calendar, pot pies, because of labor, commodity, and transportation constraints. Throttling chain supplies, according to emails viewed by CNN and interviews with grocers. Some suppliers are also telling grocers to cancel their promotion of these items and more over the holidays so products don't disappear from the shelves so quickly. These latest limits mean that stores won't have all the things, all customers heading into the holiday, uh, for all customers heading into the holidays, and shoppers may not be able to find some of their favorite products, flavors, and niche items. Shoppers will still have plenty of options, including most of these companies' core products, which they prioritize over items in less demand. Meaning, for instance, if you're a fan of Ben and Jerry, okay, um, you may find some flavors, but not others. So they're saying like cold brew, caramel latte. Oh, That'll be harder to find because that's a less popular flavor. Major food and consumer product 
manufacturers being short of supply on some items will be a challenge in the grocery industry in the final months of the year. And this is Steve Howard, Vice President of Merchandising at Bristol Farms, a grocery chain in California. Suppliers are warning the company of potential shortages of foods, glass jars, and packaging containers. In response to Bristol Farms working to bring in inventory earlier than any other holiday ever, Howard said. Purchase limits from manufacturers are rare before the pandemic, but they are creating a lesser than full condition for customers on Morton Williams stores. And Morton Williams is trying to tap secondary suppliers when its primary vendor for food and household essentials can't fulfill orders. Shortages at supermarkets are nowhere near as visible as they were in the beginning of the, you know, the outbreak last year when shoppers were flocking to stores to stockpile uh, food and household um, staples. And see, I think that's the reason why they're not letting you know in your area that they are shorthanded because they fear once people hear that, they're going to start cleaning off the shelves. And that's exactly what they don't want because if that happens, it'll be months. It may not be replenished until 2023. So that's what they're trying to prevent. But supply in grocery store aisles has not fully recovered from pre-pandemic levels. And companies such as Costco and Sam's Club have recently reinstated purchase limits for customers on paper products and cleaning supplies. Around 18% of beverages, 15% of frozen food, 16% of snacks, 15% of candy, and 18% of bakery items were out of stock at stores during the week ending October 3rd, according to the latest data from IRI, which tracks in-stock levels at leading U.S. supermarket chains, big box stores, pharmacies, and wholesale clubs. Okay, before the pandemic, 7 to 10% of the products were typically out of stock on shelves, according to IRI. When supply is tight, manufacturers often eliminate some of their fringe items to focus on ramping up production on top selling products. They also try to cut products that are more expensive to make. All right, y'all. So look, you do what you got to do because it just looks like so many of these industries are hurting and right now, the federal chair is saying that this will go on through 2022. There's no doubt about it. People are going to be struggling all through next year, getting the things they need. So it's better to know <laughs> as early in, in the game as possible. But y'all, please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video.